Variety Immigration Law is a great resource for the latest in immigration news and trends. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. It really helps out the channel. And click that notification bell so you never miss a video from Berardi Immigration Law. Hi everyone, this is Gabriella Agostinelli and today we are discussing employment opportunities and work authorization for students in the United States. Now the last video we talked about pre-completion optional practical training and now we're going to be discussing curricular practical training or CPT. CPT is work authorization granted to students who are still enrolled in their course of study. In fact, they must have one full year of courses under their belt before they can even apply for CPT. So these are F1 holders, student holder, visa holders, who are in the United States and looking for a training opportunity, typically because the program of study that they're enrolled in actually demands that some element of training be involved in this educational study. So not only does the educational curriculum require the training takes place, but it has to be training that is directly related to the student's major, their major course of study. So differently than pre-completion OPT, which we just discussed, and post-completion OPT, which we will be discussing, CPT actually does not require the issuance of an actual EAD card. How does the, pro the process actually work for CPT? So under the framework of CPT, a student has to have a job opportunity, an off-campus job opportunity available to them. They will then go to their designated school official at their university and say, here's a letter from this company confirming very basic details of what my prospective employment will look like. Please issue me a new I-20 confirming that I have this job opportunity. So once the designated school official is able to issue a new I-20 by updating the student's record in CVS, then the student is able to then take that I-20 and use it for employment purposes in the United States. So just a few interesting things about CPT. Number one, uh, you can actually hold CPT with multiple entities. You just have to be able to show them that you show the designated school official um, or, or obtain from the designated school official multiple I-20s or an updated I-20 and uh, authorizing this actual employment. Another important thing to notice, similar to pre-completion OPT, if a student is taking significant time in, of CPT, they have to be very conscious of the fact that any time you are spending in CPT will eat away at the one-year post-completion OPT that you generally are awarded following the course of your studies. So students are, have, are often tasked with making a dis decision. Do I use the CPT time or do I wait to graduate until I work? That's an important consideration for them to make. It's also important to know that when you are in CPT, working with CPT, you could, unlike pre-completion OPT, you can actually work part-time or full-time. But there are different rules regarding, depending on the course of study, work with CPT of how much time you must physically be on campus, how much time you must physically be in the United States, and the notification periods for when you need to have these opportunities established and when you need to actually start working. So that's something that you can work with your DSO on. CPT is a great option for individuals who truly have no other choice. In fact, something we've been seeing commonly over the last few years has been that if somebody has graduated from a full course of study, they did their OPT, they did their STEM OPT, which we'll talk about in our next video, they applied for the H-1B lottery and, oh, they didn't get selected. What do they do? Well, sometimes individuals are just desperate enough to stay in the United States. They know this is where they need to be in order to get their career where they want it to be. They go back to school and through that course of study, they are then able to go back to work with their previous employer as soon as they possibly can and take a few more bites at the apple to try to get 
into the H-1B lottery so that they can stay in a trajectory to be in the United States potentially forever. So if you have any questions about this, please don't hesitate to reach out. CBT, OPT, these are things that are usually totally coordinated with the school. But from time to time, we get questions as attorneys as these students are trying to transition to more permanent statuses in the United States. So these are very important considerations. We want to make sure that we're never in violation of the laws. Uh, there's a lot of nuances to student visas. And your DSO or your attorney is a great place place to start for asking questions. Thanks so much for watching this video and have a great day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that notification button so you never miss one of these important updates. Also, check out the Berardi blog that's on our website at berardiimmigrationlaw.com. The blog is updated two to three times a week, contains tons of up-to-date information on policies and trends. You won't want to miss it.